Hi, hello, people. It has been, as the people say, a long ass motherfucking time. I just got home from college almost two weeks ago, and uh, shit was kind of tough. I will not lie to you. Much better now, though, but I was low key in the trenches at first. Coming home unlocked quite a bit of trauma. It kind of transported me back to the bad, bad times. When I was living here before college, it sucked, like sucked, but it was all I knew. Like the extent of my world barely stretched beyond the walls of this house. So in a way, it almost felt like more of a gut punch coming back after seeing that there's more out there. I felt like I was shrinking, shrinking back into the fear, the helplessness, the dread. Very suffocating, not very swag. <laughs> Jesus. And then there's the guilt. I just feel terrible for kind of just counting down the days until I can escape again. Like, a big part of my rationale for going to college across the country was to get as far away as possible. So basically I'm running away, and I am aware of it. Also, the house was just such a mess. My inner Marie Kondo was screaming. But beyond just the immediate visceral disgust, it was also very anxiety inducing emotionally because the disarray of the house is very much a physical manifestation of the mental states of its inhabitants. The day after I got home, I spent the whole day cleaning I vacuumed the house for three hours straight and got two full vacuum tanks of dirt. Gave myself hecka dust allergies, but it was quite cathartic. Would recommend. I actually came up with my angsty poem while I was vacuuming. <laughs> Do I actually know how to write poetry? Absolutely not. My conception of poetry is just wax sentences, but with arbitrary line breaks. Anyway, got home and was like, hmm, I kind of want to scream and claw my eyes out. What if I made a painting with me screaming and clawing my eyes out? You know me, doing what I do best, commodifying my own trauma. I was reflecting and it's actually quite silly. I generally consider myself a very happy person, but a lot of my art is like, kind of dark. Bruh, 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 bruh. <laughs> like for this one, if I wasn't me, I'd be kind of scared. So I don't know if this is just how I cope to retain sanity or if I'm trying to extract meaning from my sad girl hours so my sadness is hashtag productive, hashtag girl boss, or if I'm just milking my emotions for content because capitalism lol. But regardless, trauma does make for good creative fodder. For the edges of the cuts, I'm using modeling paste, which is an acrylic medium for building 3D texture that's made of acrylic polymer and marble dust. It has the consistency of like runny toothpaste, but it dries like concrete. I mixed in some acrylic paint to give it some color, and I'm applying it with a palette knife and smoothing it out with a paintbrush. Being home is also definitely more bearable now that I've been out and about in the world. Back in high school, the prospect of escaping felt so abstract and unattainable. But now I've lived it, so now I know I'm not trapped and that this is just temporary. Hope is actually a tangible thing instead of just a thought experiment. But it's kind of weird. It feels less like coming home to rest from a foreign place and more like a three month stint in Massachusetts before I go back to my stint in California. I feel a bit unmoored because I don't really feel at home in either location. The act of packing and storing things made this concrete. Half of my belongings are now stored on the other side of the country. And it seems like a small thing, but these are the items that construct my day-to-day -day reality. So I don't really have a physical home base anymore. I've always believed that home is found in other people, and I'm so grateful to have a lot of people in my life who feel like home. But the untethering to a sense of place as an anchor has been kind of weird and destabilizing. I don't know. Maybe this is adulting. Here, I'm using my fluid acrylics, my babies. Look at that texture, ooh. So I'm almost 19, as in I've been a legal grown up for a hot minute now. So <laughs> I'm really out here doing the whole washed up adult living in my mom's basement vibe. Ah. Like I wish I could make one of those artsy Pinterest board ass studio vlogs that are like fairy vibes, sunlight streaming in through the windows, but like I'm literally in a dungeon. It's so grimy. Water stain from the perpetual flooding, ceiling literally falling down. This lays in peace. Bestie. 
slay queen. I said, excuse me, you're a hell of a guy. I mean, my mom and you're like pelican fly. So I found this bottle of linseed oil that's been sitting down here for maybe a century. Um, and this bitch does not open because the cap is like gorilla glued on there. But luckily, Rodent Bestie came to save the day and gave me some easy access. Please don't unsubscribe. Actually, you know what, maybe you should. <laughs> so this was my palette setup. One of the perks of oils is that you don't have to mix your colors over and over and over again. So this paint lasted me like almost a whole week. During my spring quarter, I took intro to painting and learned how to oil paint. I was a little disappointed that there wasn't that much technical guidance in the class or like any instruction at all. The professor was kind of just like, okay, here's the assignment, good luck besties. So I don't think I really learned anything new per se, other than the mechanics of using oils. But I'm still really glad that I took the class because it was like allocated practice time. If I didn't have the structure to force me to paint, I definitely would not have made time for it on my own. There wasn't that much room for creativity in the assignments. It was very much like, here is this specific still life that you must paint. But I actually really liked it because it took a lot of the stress away. When it comes to approaching art making, for a while I've been feeling like I have to come up with these super intellectual and meaningful concepts in order to prove I can make real art or whatever. Which usually means I end up making nothing at all. But this class allowed me to reconnect with the physical act of painting again, and took me back to the basics of playing with color and light and form and stuff. I actually hated painting with oils at first because they take so goddamn long to dry and I am impatient. Unlike acrylics, you have to actually wait before you can layer because then you're just pushing paint around and everything gets super muddy. Also, you're supposed to wear gloves because apparently they're kind of toxic. So I really thought I was a diehard acrylic early and was never going to use oils again after that class. But uh, I kind of like them now. I don't know if it's Stockholm Syndrome or sunk cost fallacy because because. Stanford gives absolute pee pee poo poo funding to their art department because their entire thicky endowment goes toward giving the CS department their free pizzas. <laughs> but so I had to spend 500 of my own dollars on art supplies for this dummy class. That shit hurted. So I'm just trying to get my money's worth. But I do actually like oil paint now. Ah, don't cancel me. You're not supposed to mix acrylic and oil paint together since acrylics are water-based and oil is oil-based, but you can layer them once they're completely dry. So for this painting, I used acrylic for the background because I wanted it to dry fast so I could do wacky drips and stuff and apply thick paint strokes, which for oils can take months to dry, which was a no from me. Then I used oils for basically everything in the foreground. I'm definitely suffocating myself because my basement has booty cheeks ventilation, but here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> Why inhale your heavy metals through vaping when you can just sniff cadmium red oil paint? Why did you even decide to come home for the summer, you might ask? Well, the choice was quite a toughie. Over winter break, I spent literally days looking into internships. I did all this research, made an eight-page Google Doc, and then I decided to apply to none of them. So in the end, I chose to be a conscientious objector to the Stanford internship research grind hustle rat race and instead make art in my basement, baby. Looking at all my classmates with their McKinsey and Facebook internship, sorry, meta, <laughs> or marine biology research or whatever, it's kind of hard not to feel like I'm coughing out. Even though I know rationally that the Stanford bubble is stupid and capitalism is stupid, I can't really help but feel the twinge of, ruh -ruh, I'm being lazy, this is not real work, etc. But at the end of the day, I miss creating. I think it would have been pretty easy for me to veer onto the normative path of academia and give up the whole art thing, or minimize it to a very once in a while hobby, like it was in high school. And I feel like that probably definitely would have happened if I didn't choose art this summer. 
Also, also, I missed my home friends. These people are so special, like I can barely even describe it. They're the ones who taught me what unconditional love looks like. They make me feel so safe and valued and cared for, and I feel so completely comfortable around them that we can have these hours long, emotionally vulnerable, introspective conversations, or just be dumb and silly. I've learned and continue to learn so much from them. Like I genuinely owe so much of who I am as a person today to them. They're my family for real. The homies, literally. The spider motif in the painting is literal, like there's actually a spider infestation in my house. The girly I use for reference photos I found on my bathroom floor. Signed her to IMG Models on my Animal Whisperer game on my Snow White shit. When it comes to goals for the summer, I'm not aiming for anything too ambitious or concrete because I think the pressure I put on myself was a big contributor to making art miserable for me last year. I got to a point where I dreaded painting and making videos, like the process itself was painful and even just thinking about it stressed me out. So this summer I just want to create art that pushes me and feels fulfilling, but do it without burning myself out. And I think that will require being mindful of my limits and actually giving myself rest when I need it. Which I am not very good at. <laughs> I'm working on it. I am hopeful because making this painting was actually really fun for me. And I let myself experiment without really caring about trying to make it look good for an audience. As of right now, I feel excited to create. So I'm gonna try my very best to retain that energy going forward. some fake polyester spider webs, like the Halloween decoration kind, and I kind of had no idea what I was doing, but I just like put them on there. And then to secure them, I used this hot glue gun, which I thought would work because the hot glue stringy things low key look like cobwebs. I was kind of scared the heat was going to melt the paint, and it kind of definitely did, so I kind of definitely breathed in some shit I'm not supposed to breathe in. But again, here for a good time, not a long time. And here is the final product. It's called Home Sweet Home. It's 40 by 40 inches and it took me around 36 hours total over the course of a week. That is all I have for you lovely people. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful, incredible rest of your day. 
bye bye I'm in trouble when we get boom. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <laughs>